brothers and sisters, Trinity de Guzman coming at you right now from the incredible jungles of Peru. I just finished an absolutely incredible ayahuasca retreat, also known as a dieta, or a diet in English, and it was so profound, so powerful, and one of the biggest things that I got from it was getting so clear about how I'm here to share the word of this medicine and to spread this incredible medicine with the world because I've never seen anything help so many people so profoundly. And I have some advice for anybody who's looking into an ayahuasca retreat, and that's first and foremost, you know, like really check in with yourself if you're serious about your work because it's not easy. Doing an ayahuasca retreat isn't a walk in the park. You know, oftentimes you feel very weak because of there's, there's so much that you're letting go of and so much that's being processed and integrated and released. And it's just, it's very intense and it can often be very difficult on the, on the body. And it's very important that you don't leave in the middle of a retreat, you know, like there's everything about the mind. And I'll, I'll tell you this now so that you can be prepared for it when you actually are in your retreat. And it's that the mind, when it's in the depths of its intensity at a retreat, will often want to tell you to leave or to, yeah, just get out of it. And that's because all the things that are coming up within you that are being released, whatever they are, habits or patterns or negative, negative beliefs or limiting beliefs, like whatever they are, you know, blocks of receiving, of worthiness, of deserving, of all the countless different things that we've collected as human beings in our lives. And obviously why you're called to an ayahuasca retreat is because, you know, there's some part of you that's aware of the healing that's needed or just the importance of going deeper with the medicine. Like, as you're at a retreat, oftentimes the mind will tell you to leave or the ego will because these things, these blocks, these things that don't serve us, they've, so to say, just made a comfy home inside of ourselves, inside of our psyche, inside of our consciousness. And deep down, they've just like rooted themselves. And it's so important that no matter what, no matter how hard your experience is, no matter what's coming up to be released, no matter how difficult it is, that you stay at whatever retreat that you're at. Because it'll actually... Oftentimes, if you leave, it'll make it worse because it's like it's been brought up to the surface and then you leave midway before actually doing the full cleaning and it's just even more intense. And so that's like one of the things that are so important. Another thing is like, you know, with ayahuasca, that's been so, it's, you know, over the past 10 years as it's been more and more popularized or like as it's been entering the north or the western world just like yoga and meditation has i really feel and believe that ayahuasca is going to be this just as big as yoga and meditation because of how powerful that it is you know and in healing you know in connecting us with our truth with consciousness with who we really are and allowing us to let go of the things that don't serve us you know so i'm so grateful that you're called to ayahuasca or an ayahuasca retreat because you know it's so powerful and you're doing such amazing work for not only yourself but the collective you know you're healing not only your own self but future generations so that you don't have to pass on these negative beliefs and patterns and also the whole we're doing such deep cleaning because really the people who are called to ayahuasca i truly believe are the people who are here to ground this new reality, the new earth, this a reality based more on love, on connection, on community, on harmony, on truth, on the heart, you know, versus the mind and desire and getting, being. And so with that all being said, like with the commercialization or the popularity of ayahuasca over the past 10 years or so, it's, there's been a lot of people who have been uh, entering this market so to say it's not really a market i think that's the wrong word to use but who have been coming into ayahuasca to really just make money and there's a lot of black magic too like hey 
I don't want to scare you. I'm not doing this to scare you or do any, like, put fear in you. But I'm just sharing this for awareness. Because it's so important that you're aware that, you know, whoever you sit with or wherever you go for an ayahuasca retreat, that the people are clean in their intention, in their heart, why they're doing it. They're not doing it for money, but they're doing it for the healing, for the expansion, for the consciousness, for the love, for the purest reasons. And so with that all being said, it's really important that you really check in with your guidance with whatever retreat center that you decide to go to because that's the ultimate truth is your own guidance, your own heart, your own higher self, your soul, your whatever you want to call it. And with that all being said, like my best advice is following your guidance, following your truth and knowing how to keep yourself safe in ceremony is really good. Like, of course, the shaman or the curandero is there to keep you safe and that's their job. And it's also really good to know how to hold your own space energetically because literally speaking, you're opening a lot of portals when you're taking ayahuasca. In an ayahuasca ceremony, a lot is open. And it's the shaman's or the curandero's job to make sure you're safe, you know, and that only the beings or the energies of divine love, Christ consciousness, highest bliss and connection to truth are allowed in your space around you in the ceremony and so here's just a little advice for holding your own space and it's just it's invoking your own protection and again this isn't for from a place of fear but from a place of awareness that there's a lot of energies that are out there that aren't of the highest purest love light consciousness and so to protect yourself and just create this literal like bubble around you, you say three times, three is a very powerful number, you say three times, and you can use whatever words that you want. I personally use divine love, Christ consciousness, because what you're invoking is like the highest, purest love light consciousness, God light, God consciousness, Christ consciousness, whatever words you want to use for that, you can feel that, you know? I personally say, so for me, my invocation is, like, I call forth divine love, Christ consciousness, all beings who come through divine love and Christ consciousness, and only the beings who come through divine love, Christ consciousness. And with that, you're literally just going, <sighs> and creating this protective space around yourself. And yeah, these are all just a few tips that I have for anybody who's looking into an ayahuasca retreat, how to protect yourself, tuning into your guidance, you know, being aware of like the intentions and asking your higher self, is this person clean in their intentions and their purity? And yeah, really checking in if you're serious with your work, because an ayahuasca retreat is only there for you. And I only recommend an ayahuasca retreat if you're serious about your healing, about your conscious expansion, about your growth. And of course, never leave an ayahuasca retreat in the middle of it. And so, yeah, with that all being said, like, I, like I've created a site called ayahuascahealings.com and the medicine has shown me that I'm here to help spread word of her, of this medicine. And I'm helping a friend here. Oh my God, I just helped have opening ceremony at this new retreat center that a friend is launching over here. And I'm so grateful to be able to put my energy and my talent to be able to help him share what he's doing. And, you know, even with this retreat, retreat center that I'm helping to share with the world, I'm not going to say, like, come to our retreat center. I'm saying feel into your own guidance and educate yourself because that is the most important thing. Educate yourself, feel into the people behind it, and follow your truth. That's it. So with that all being said, check out ayahuascahealings.com. The link's somewhere in the description. And it's just a resource for anybody who's called to ayahuasca and you know, there's a documentary there too that I highly recommend you check out. And yeah, just visit. And if you have any questions, ask. I'm here for you. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you on the site and maybe over here. Much love. Mwah.